Welcome to another new episode of the Get Organized with Declutter Me podcast with myself, Shalina. I hope you're well wherever you are in the world. Today, we're diving into a topic that's relevant for many of you as the summer draws to a close, getting back to school in the most organized way possible. Whether you're a parent, a student, or simply looking to create more structure in your daily life, you're in for a treat. So grab your tea or coffee, find a comfy spot, and let's jump right in. Before the school bell starts ringing, it's essential to understand why early preparation is a game changer. Planning ahead not only reduces your stress, but also sets the tone for a successful school year. By gradually easing into the school routine, you give yourself and your family the gift of a smoother transition. Let's start first with your syncing your sleep schedule. So one of the most significant challenges during the back to school season is adjusting sleep schedules. To make the shift easier, start a few weeks before school starts. So gradually move the bedtime and wake up time closer to the school routine. This helps everyone, kids and adults alike, to adapt to the early mornings. This is especially important for teenagers who like to sleep until past lunchtime and they decide to wake up, you know, to get get some food. Um, So get them to start changing their sleep schedule as soon as possible before the start of school. Next, jumping from the summer mode to school mode can be overwhelming. Instead of a sudden shift, gradually reintroduce school-related tasks. Start by implementing a reading hour or setting aside time for academic activities each day. The gradual approach eases the family into the academic mindset. Lastly, setting the tone for a smoother back-to-school experience involves creating a structured atmosphere. Set expectations for chores, homework time and leisure activities. Establish a dedicated space for school supplies and communicate routines with everyone in the family. This consistency will help reduce the chaos and create a more organized environment. Next, let's talk about streamlining your morning routines. Mornings can make or break your day and having a well thought out morning game plan can truly make a difference. So let's talk about how you can create a seamless morning routine that sets you and your family up for success. One of the most effective strategies to save time in the morning is to lay your outfits out the night before. That's school uniform, work attire, workout clothes. I used to do it all the time in my corporate job and I still do it now with my declutter me uniform, even though it's already set up. Get that, you know, whatever you're going to wear the next day, get it out have everything ready and it eliminates the early morning scramble and decision fatigue. This simple practice ensures everyone starts the day feeling put together and confident. Include your shoes and your accessories and your jewelry as well in this this whole thing. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day according to a lot of people and it's even more critical during the school season. So streamline mornings designated in breakfast area with a grab and go option and Prepare breakfast items like smoothie packs, overnight oats, pre-cut fruit the night before. So that helps you to eliminate the scurrying around doing everything in the morning. This not only saves you time, but also ensures everyone starts the day with a nourishing meal. Keeping everyone in sync can be challenging, especially during the school year. An effective solution is to implement a shared family calendar. This can be a physical wall calendar or a digital solution like Google Calendar. By inputting school schedules, extracurricular activities, appointments, and more, you create a central hub of information that keeps everyone on the same page. And they can't have any excuses. In addition to the shared family calendar, leverage technology to set reminders. Use your smartphone or smart home devices to create alerts for wake-up times, leaving for school or work, and other crucial tasks. These reminders act as gentle nudges that help everyone stay on track. Next, let's tackle the notorious clutter of school supplies. From pens and notebooks to arts and materials, we'll explore in this next section how to keep everything accessible and tidy. The first step is to create an organized system for school supplies. So designate a a specific area for storing your supplies. It could be a drawer, shelf or a cupboard. This dedicated space will prevent supplies from being cluttered and scattered all over the house. 
Next, invest in clear storage containers or bins for your school supplies. These containers offer a visual cue, making it easy to see what's inside without digging through piles. Clear containers also create a clear and cohesive look, adding to the aesthetics of your organized space. Um, I also suggest using something like um, they have in uh, IKEA called Mojan or in Muji, the, the, the containers you can use for your makeup and jewelry. You can use that for your school stationery as well. So you can put your pens and pencils and label each section. It makes it easier to grab and go what you need and also makes you not buy a surplus amount of stuff every year because you can see what you have already. Um, and before you go and buy anything, first check what you have and organize the, the school supplies. Label shelves and dividers are your allies in the battle against clutter as well. So categorize the supplies by type. So pens, pencils, notebooks, art materials, and so on. You can even do, even the art material, you can separate between the paint, the pencils, the crayons, um, the charcoal, you know, whatever it is. Then place labels on those shelves or dividers to guide everyone in the family on where each item belongs. This minimizes confusion and helps to maintain the organization. Just like any organized system, your school supplies need regular maintenance, so set aside time to sort through the supplies, decluttering anything that's broken, no longer useful, or just never used. This prevents the accumulation of unnecessary items and keeps your storage space clutter-free. Next, let's talk about managing your school calendars and your activities. Digital calendar tools are your best friends when it comes to managing busy schedules. Whether you prefer Google Calendar, Microsoft Outlook, or another app, Having a digital calendar allows you to input events or set reminders and easily share your schedule with family members. Color code is a powerful technique for visual clarity. So assign different colors to each family member um, and their activities and commitments. This makes it quick and easy to see who's doing what at a glance. It also prevents scheduling conflicts and overlaps. A central command center is a physical or digital hub where all family members can access and update the family calendar. It can be a physical bulletin board, a designated section on your fridge, or even a shared online calendar. This keeps everyone in sync and minimizes confusion. Also have regular family meetings. They are cornerstone of having a successful organization. So set aside time each week to discuss upcoming events, commitments, and any changes to the schedules. This open communication ensures that everyone is on the same page and can make adjustments if necessary. And also ensures that you'll find the pieces of paper or email from your children when they have forgotten to give it to you a week about some event that's happening. In addition to digital calendars, reminder apps can be incredibly useful. So I've talked about using, you know, your smart home applications, but you know, you can have reminders as well, a reminder app. I use TickTick. Um, and it can reset reminders for school pickups, extracurricular curricular activities, which I can't even say properly, and important deadlines. So these reminders act as helpful nudges that keep everyone on track. Let's next talk about creating a homework haven. Homework time doesn't have to be a struggle. It can be a productive and focused experience with the right environment and techniques. Begin by creating a designated study space that is solely for homework and learning. This could be a corner of a room, a desk in a quiet area, or even a portable study card. Having a dedicated space helps signal to the mind that it's time to focus and learn. Keep your study space clutter-free by organizing supplies efficiently. So use desktop organizers, drawer dividers, and labeled containers, um, and you know, just like you did for your stationery. And this minimizes distractions and maximizes efficiency. Distractions can derail the most focus of minds. And I remember I used to get distracted very quickly if I wasn't able to focus and keep uh, a distracted, distraction-free zone in my, in my room. So I, you know, what I always recommend and what I used to do was my minimizing the visual and auditory disruption. So choose a quiet room away from the TV and loud noises. Turn off notifications on devices and use noise cancelling headphones if you have them. Time management is key to your productivity study sessions, so encourage the use of techniques like the Pomodoro technique, which involves focusing on work for a set period. Then you have a, tw uh, a short break. So usually it's 20 minutes work and then a break. This approach prevents burnout and keeps the mind fresh. 
don't forget about comfort. So ensure that the study space is ergonomically designed to prevent physical strain. So choose a comfortable chair, set a desk at the right height and position the computer or books at eye level to reduce strain on your eyes and your neck. Finally, let's talk about transitioning to bedtime blissfully. Transitioning from the hustle and bustle of the day to a peaceful bedtime routine is an essential part of maintaining a healthy lifestyle. One of the most impactful steps you can take is to reduce screen time before bed. The blue light emitted by the screens can interfere with the production of the sleep-inducing hormone melatonin. Encourage a screen-free zone at least an hour before bedtime to help signal to the brain that it's time to wind down. And this applies to you too, adults as well, not just for the kids. Calming rituals are wonderful tools to promote relaxation and prepare the mind for sleep. Whether it's reading a book, practicing gentle yoga stretches, or enjoying a warm cup of caffeine-free tea, these rituals can help reduce and, um, the stress and create a sense of calm that carries you into sleep. Your sleep environment plays a crucial role in the quality of your rest. So ensure that your bedroom is conducive to sleep by keeping it cool, dark, quiet, and clutter-free. Invest in comfortable pillows and a supportive mattress that contributes to a restful night's sleep. Mindfulness and deep breathing exercises are also powerful tools to create quiet the mind and reduce the stress that you have had over the day and like kind of reduce the stress as well. So spend a few minutes before bed engaging in deep, slow breathing and practicing mindfulness techniques that ground you in the present moment. Consistency is key when it comes to bedtime routines. So try to go to bed and wake up at the same time each day, even on weekends. This helps to regulate your body's internal clock, making it easier to fall asleep and wake up refreshed. Thank you for joining me on this journey to an organized back to school season. If you have any questions, challenges or success stories to share, I'd love to hear from you. Reach out to me on my website, www.declutterme.com or on my social media at declutterme or drop me an email. And remember the path to organization is a journey, not a destination. If you found this episode helpful, please subscribe to the Get Organized with Declutter Me podcast, leave a review and until next time, stay organized, stay inspired and take those small steps towards an organized life. Take care. Bye.